Hello and welcome to the Health Oddity Podcast. This is episode 172. And if you are listening on the day of release, which I know many of you do, uh, it is the 15th of December. So we are moving towards Christmas. I am wearing my Elf t-shirt. I went and watched Elf at the cinema the other day uh, and, uh, and I'm wearing that. The other three are festively dressed in black today um but we are gonna we're gonna we're gonna kind of roll in we do have a very very special double double guest episode today uh and i will introduce you to our guests in a second i'll just quickly check in with mr peter lant um how are you doing pete you okay i'm i'm doing very well it's funny because years ago when i started seeing sean my girlfriend about well, what seven years ago um she was living in Bristol, I was living in Bath, and she booked tickets to go and see Elf at the cinema there, right? One, like, it, you know, because I used to go and visit her every weekend. So we went to see it, and it was like one o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. And it was full of, like, we haven't got any kids, and it was full of kids. And um, the bit where he drinks the bottle of Coke, and then he just does that massive burp, and he goes, did you hear that? And this kid just like, right? He goes, I heard that. <laughs> 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 you just reminded me of that. It was so I funny. Think it's like, like, it, was oh, like the, it was like the 20th or 25th anniversary of it this year, I think. It's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's really amazing how, how, how time flies. But we went and watched it, uh, Steph and myself, at half past 10 in the morning on a Tuesday, <laughs> and it was literally us and one other one other couple in there. I think two women in there watching it. But no, that it, it was very, very good. It was excellent. And uh, right. And yeah, you, we, we discussed, I think um, you've completed your six million step challenge, haven't you? Yep. Yep. I'm currently yep. on like six million two hundred and twenty thousand or something. OK, so, <laughs> we're, we're cracking on. <laughs> OK, very, very good. So today we are joined. We, we are spread across three time zones today for the podcast today. We are joined for the record breaking ninth time. <laughs> by uh mr dan john joining us yes. from uh utah how are you doing dan you okay hey man it's all about breaking records it's you know you break a record and you know what the funny thing here's what i'm gonna hear tomorrow when's number 10 and i'll be like i don't know i don't know why i'm not on more often i mean uh this is just you know uh and i feel bad for your listeners uh, you should you should say that more often as well <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the other thing is i saw elf I saw Elf when it came out, and I and I had a really good seat. I was right up, I was right up in the front. And in the opening sequence, I turned and I said, "This is going to be a classic." The opening sequence, I knew it was going to be amazing. Uh, that, I, you know, I know they make the we we call them Hallmark films here in the United States. You know, where, but uh, that is a true show that I think is just going to stand the test of time. I just think uh, it is just. You know, it, it, it's our, my generations, it's a wonderful life, you know, which mm. I can talk about too, if you don't mind, but we can, <laughs> I'll, let's introduce this to the other, other young man. <laughs> and we are joined uh, in a separate time zone, two hours later, um, for the second visit um, of, uh, by, I should say, Mr. Tim Anderson. How are you doing, Tim? Good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> hey i've got a question though for peter uh is yes. that you just did six million steps is that like throughout your entire lifetime or did you like have a start date for that <laughs> yeah yeah i've only got little legs um no um it's it's this year okay six yeah. million steps this year okay i realized i realized the beginning of this year that the average person does the average person as well like you know out of everybody does like five thousand steps a day the average which is like just over two miles. So right. that means half yeah. of people are doing less than two miles a day. And I, I've got a, a working cocky, cocker spaniel. We go walking every day. So I just set myself, I thought 500,000 a month sounds about, sounds a lot, but reasonable. Um, That's 6 million a year. And I did it, I, I finished it on the 20th of November. So I'm on, yeah, like I say, 6.2 million at the minute. That's it's great. Point. That's... And was it about eight mile? Is it eight miles a day average? Is that what it works? Eight out? miles a day every day, yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, some more than others and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, average. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can just put your feet up for the next uh, three weeks. <laughs> I'm do it. Yeah, tell that to the dog. <laughs> no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Theory, mate. Well, have I've... you had oh, sorry. body composition changes from this? Um, do you know what? I haven't measured any of that. Um, 
I I just I start I just decided to do it because I like walking and um so I, I don't know. All I know is whenever I go out for a walk, I feel better afterwards. Oh yeah. Like every time, every single time. And again, and then watching the boy running around and just enjoying himself as well. And he hasn't got a care in the world. It just it kind of just brings you back down, you know. Um, especially if, if I've have mornings where I might do a workout and then do some work. And then we don't go out until like one o'clock in the afternoon. And I can I can feel myself like I've been in all day. I need to get out. And then everything changes. So yeah. That's great. Congrats. Congrats. And you've Congrats. also and he's also now, Dan, uh, do you just want to very I know we talk about it quite a lot, <laughs> Pete, but do you just want to just just because obviously Tim Tim and Dan won't know, but you're what you've done now within the local community, within your your weekly walk in Bath for the community, the free walk that you do, raising money for Shet for homeless as well, is uh, just want to blow your own trumpet or, or just <laughs> tell tell no, them what you've been doing. I'd it's, it's, no, 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 no. I know that sounds silly. <laughs> not blow your own trumpet, but just say what you've done because I think that's a that's a massive thing as well. You know, it's funny actually because I watched one of your um your latest podcast. I think this or I watched a bit of it this morning, Dan, and it was about. Someone asked the question about um, your family being in the military and in the police and fire service and all that. And, and what you said, you know, you don't have to wear a badge to, you know, not all heroes wear capes. I'm not saying that, but you don't have to wear a badge to do good in your local community. So, and it made me think about that because it was in July I started because of this walking and this steps thing. I just thought, do you know what? I'm going to set up a walk. We've got, I, I, I don't know if you've ever been to Bath, but it's a World Heritage Site. And it's a tiny, it's a city, but it's not that big. In 10 minutes in any direction, you're pretty much in the countryside. You walk up, a, it's it's in a bowl. So you walk <laughs> up a hill. It's not mountains, it's just hills. But you walk up a hill and then you get a beautiful view of the city from all over the place. Um, and so I've decided to just start every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Kind of like what you do with the people who turn up at your house as well. Um, Saturday morning at 9 a.m. I'm going, I'm like, I'm going for a walk with a dog. Who wants to come? And and it's all free, so everyone who comes along donates money to um, a national charity to help end homelessness because we've got a, a homelessness crisis, a housing crisis over here as well. Um, so it was better, like, I just put it all together and I was like, well, everyone gets mentally stronger, physically stronger, and it, it does good in the world. So I was like, oh, well, well let's just do that. And it's been, it's been really good. We've had a fair few people through, so... Um, that's the, the idea is to build it nationwide, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see what that's happens. With that. I don't know. That's, that's awesome. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. Excellent. So I just want to say, guys, if you are listening, I know we do have new listeners joining us every week. If you've not, I mean, I haven't got, I haven't actually got the index of all of Dan's eight previous episodes, but if you go back and listen to any of Dan's episodes, they're all great. And if you go back and listen to the first episode with Tim, that's fantastic. But Tim, I'm holding up. The original huh? press reset, you know, original strength here. I've got quite a few of Tim's books. If you're listening on the uh, radio, this isn't uh, the radio. We're not on the radio, are we? <laughs> listening on the, uh, you know, on the wireless. You on the wireless on, if you're listening on the wireless, you can't see what I'm holding up. And uh, <laughs> we get that little chime. Huh? The BBC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding up Dan's latest, the Omni book, but Dan's obviously written loads of books that I've got in my bookshelf as well. Um, but both guys are fantastic. And the reason, well, one of the reasons why I've got the, both both uh, gentlemen on with us today together is that they're both actually going on a little bit of a, a, a journey together. Um, and they're going to be coming over to England next April to do, to do a weekend um, workshop together. And if you've ever read any of Dan's stuff, um or listen to dan's podcast um it, it, you know he's often references tim tim's work and an original strength you know in in, in most uh things that i re read of dan's and i know that tim and dan um work together you know or uh, you know kind of i suppose there's a great synergy between what they do and i really wanted to talk a little bit about about that about the the original strength the pressing reset the kind of resets the easy strength, the kind of the training and the synergy and why they fit well so well together. And then maybe also a little bit about what people can expect um, if they do come and see you when you're over in England um, in April. So I suppose, I mean, really maybe to begin with, maybe for both of you together would be really nice one at a time, maybe just to find out how you first became aware of each other um, 
was it a personal meeting? Was it just an awareness of each other's work? You want to uh, tell a story yeah. or drop me to Tim? You, you get started out because it's a it's a good story. You tell from, it well. Now, from the way I remember, now you have to be careful because this is you know <laughs> I'm at that age where my memory you know starts to make decisions about truth. You know, uh, hell, I could be a politician now. I don't remember anything. Uh, <laughs> so. I, we went to this. I went to this thing called the Kettlebell Correctives. So, uh, is that what that stood for? <laughs> C- uh, oh, was it a C- CKFMS or something? Was CK- it F- CKFMS? Corrective Kettlebell FMS. CKFMS. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they sent all these videos you had to watch, and they sent all this stuff. And then uh, we go there, and they show us the videos that they sent us. Is it? Am I? If I'm exaggerating, I. The same exact videos that they sent us, they show us. And and they're long videos. And once you've heard a joke on a video, you've heard it. And uh, we our group was interesting, to say the least. And uh, to the point that this, in, a, what was it, four days? Four, four yes. days? I never, no one ever, no one ever finished the FMS screen on me. In the, do you remember that? They tried, uh, but it just didn't work out. Yeah, we it was taking us an hour, hour and a half to do the FMS screens because our group was greatly dysfunctional, and I did not like the weekend. I bought an earlier flight out in cash just to get out because the storm was showing up, and I get back and someone said, "Well, was it any valuable?" And I said, "Dude, I met this guy." So Tim and I were we're we're kind of teammates in the thing, and uh, Tim goes, he just started to say, "I want to share this idea with you." about this idea I have about you, you look at the way a baby moves and you fall him. And he, and he goes, I call it original strength. And I'm like, and I, I have never been more all in on a concept than that. Now at the time, I think I was, was I post or pre total hip? It was pre wow. your pre. So this is, te- this is 13 years ago then, right? Yeah. So here's the funny thing. 13 years ago, Tim looked the exact same. 28 years ago, <laughs> Tim looked the exact same. 48 like years ago. Road. <laughs> yeah. Tim is 77 years old. He's 11 years <laughs> older than I am, which is just stunning. And uh, he, I only had a few things, but we instantly added them to our training. I mean, like that week, um, I was in a lot of pain because I was uh, I had bone on bone in my hip. But I... It, even with that, it made me feel better. Uh, that weird word, feel better. You know, when you do something and you're like, sometimes in the gym, we'll make that joke. Of, ah, that's the stuff. You know, when you're doing a certain, you're doing a, um, you know, like we call them six point rocks and you put the leg out in a kickstand and ah, that's, and I just felt good. And then, uh, and then every chance I got, uh, to, to see Tim or meet with Tim, I, I went on my way to do it. And uh, of all the things, you know, people ask me all the time, why don't, you know, we should combine original strength and easy strength. And I look at them like, it's, you, there's no need, you don't have to get a, you know, you don't have to go get a doctoral dissertation or hire a bunch of, you know, PhDs in the world. Just, you know, do a set of presses, do a set of OS, do a set of deadlifts, do a set of OS. And I don't know of a better training system. I, I really do. So everything I've done in the last, gosh, 12, 13 years has had uh, original strength dipped deeply in it. My work with the American military and the, and your own British military there. Uh, one of the things we bring in is the basics. And uh, as I recall, that's how it happened, Tim. Yeah. So what what you guys probably don't know is I had not, when I met Dan at the CKFMS, when we were doing the CKFMS, I was trying to, I was already experimenting with OS and trying to flesh out all my ideas. Um, And for whatever reason, Dan gave me his phone number uh, while we were together uh, at the CKFMS. And when I got back, I had, I had accidentally written a book about what the resets were and stuff, but I didn't know what to do with it. And I just had this little nudge to, I had, I had this guy's number. I was like, you call Dan John and just ask him what he thinks you should do. So I called, I called up Dan and he goes, you know what? Let me put you in touch with Laurie Draper. She's my publicist. 
So then I call up Lori and she's, she was so sweet. Um, and she didn't know me from anybody. Um, but she, she spent an hour with me on the phone that basically ended with, I think you can just self-publish this yourself. All you need is a PayPal account and put this out on the internet. Um, you know, and, and let, you know, let people purchase it from, from PayPal. And she goes, just make it a PDF. So I, I did, and I didn't know what to do with it there. Um, you know, just because I put it on the internet doesn't mean anything, right? So I went to uh, a Dragon Door forum and just put, hey, guys, I wrote this little book. At the time, it was called Becoming Bulletproof. Oh, I, yeah. I, hmm. um, and I was, I was like, I, I really don't, I think this will really help you with your kettlebell training, um, help you feel better. And, and you know, it was four bucks, four dollars. And a couple of people started buying it. But then, like, a lot of people started buying it. Um, and it just kind of took off, but none of that would have happened <laughs> if I hadn't met, like Dan John's pretty much responsible for OS being a thing, which is kind of crazy, right? <laughs> so I've got here, I've got the Becoming Bulletproof project. Is that, that's, a, that's not the original one. That's a later one that you, that you brought out. Is it? So that's, that one's completely different. And that's more yeah. or less of um, insane training for work capacity after you tie yourself together with pressing reset. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that's great. I've, I've read all these and I just wondered, just when you said becoming bulletproof, I wondered if that might have been the first thing. You, yeah, no, but that was kind of just yeah. a similar name, but uh, but but came after after original strength. Yeah, fantastic. And um, and in terms of actual training, uh, I mean, obviously, when we spoke to you, Tim, I know you do. I, I follow you, obviously, on, on oh, social yeah, media. James. Well. Are we all frozen? Oh, no, you're back. You're with us. You're back. You're with us. Was that me? Shoot, yeah, but, but you're with us. That's fine. You're with yeah. us. Yeah, you're with us. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, in terms of your training, Tim, I obviously follow a lot of what you what you do um on, on social media and things as well. Um do you I, I see a lot of the stuff you do now with hammers and uh, small hammers, you know, and, and a lot of shoulder mobility and, and things like that. Um, are you in the process? Do you do kind of regular training? I, I call it regular training. I don't know what, what regular training is, but you know, you you kind of lift and stuff as well, and 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 do more um, kind of compound lifts and things as well at the moment. Or are you more into the you know the movement, the crawling, the kind of mobility? Uh, you know, because obviously the stuff you put out is the stuff that you put out for the benefit of education for people. So I just wondered in within your own training. So I'm a hot mess uh, when it comes to training. I, I go through several seasons. Um, and so I'm, I'm always doing body weight stuff, crawling, pressing, reset, calisthenics, always doing that. I do experiment with compound lifts and stuff. Um, and I was like, last time Dan and I were together, I was telling him that I was experimenting with like very light percentages of body weight load for all kinds of lifts. But no matter what I do, um, <laughs> Dan's pretty much, he infects everything I do. Cause like, so, so whatever I'm doing, I'm always asking myself, did I push? Did I pull? Did I squat? Did I hinge? Did I carry or crawl? Like, so, so no matter what type of training I'm doing, I'm really just covering those things, making sure I'm balanced. Um, and everything else, like the hammers and stuff, I'm, I'm always just playing and, and experimenting with stuff. Hmm. And I suppose Dan with yourself, I know you obviously you, you, you do your own training for easy strength. I know you still, you, are you continuing to, um, compete in olympic lifting i know you have up until very recently are you going to are you going to be competing more in olympic lifting going forwards well i'm i'm waiting on the rule changes because if they move there's a couple of rule changes they're discussing and if they will i'll go back uh you know i'll go back to five or six contests a year if they don't i'll i'll lift with my team when my team needs points uh the the there's an issue in olympic lifting right now it's called the press out and uh it's to the point that those of us have been around a long time can't even, I, I don't know what the rule is anymore. You know, you'll see at the, at the world's a, a woman go like that and they'll call it a press out. Well, that was just a lot of gravity hitting the human body and yeah, squeezing. Boom, boom. yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. like, it's not like that. It was a, so uh, I, I find weightlifting meets almost unfathomable sometimes now because I don't know. I honestly don't know what a good attempt is, but I, I don't. And so if they change the rules, I'll take it serious. Um, one of the things I should say about Tim, it was funny, a couple of years ago here at the house, I had a, a RKC in my backyard. Um, so, you know, I have enough kettlebells to pull that off in my home. 
and uh, Tim stayed with me. And it was interesting because Tim passed the RKC without having touched the kettlebell in a year, right? Wasn't that what you had done? So yeah. he passed the cert without ever touching a kettlebell because his work capacity is through the roof. And he, he had good technique. And I, and I, and it was like one of those things where it really helped me. Uh, so here's the lesson I get from that gentle listener is that if someone goes to a, an Olympic lifting meet without Olympic lifting and does well, I want to ask them what they did because in their formula is an answer to a lot of problems. If you can pass the RKC uh, here, I think it was in June. So it was pretty hot here in Utah. Um, it is warm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it can be brutal here. Pass the RKC in June without using kettlebells. And I mean, he really was. He moved great, <clears throat> did everything fine. Well, I want to look at that and see what you did. So I'm always, you know, I don't listen to coaches that, you know, if you if you if you're with your athletes a hundred hours a week and they have pods they sleep in and they every meal comes to them in a test tube and it, you know, it's all I I can't mimic that. But if you say you won some kind of championship on three 45 minute workouts a week, yes, you know, I'm all in listening because to me that's the formula for success, you know. So that's I that's that I want to make sure we mention that, Tim, because that was that's when I think you and I first, that's when I first really started to rethink the power of, so that is what work capacity is. This, so this is what, you know, this isn't a, you know, every time I get on here, I feel it's a love fest. So let's, I'll, I'll Tim smells. No, okay. <laughs> good. He smells so, good. <laughs> so, one of the things I began to realize is that why waste my time building work capacity doing the sport? Because if I'm building work capacity doing the sport, which has value, uh, we also means that we're going to have a lot of crap, crappy repetitions, a lot of subpar things. And then I realized that I've got this toolkit over here that I can turn between hinges, uh, the, the whole hinge and squat family. You know, I can turn my athletes into monsters. And that's when I took, and I called hinge snap and work capacity. And I slammed the two together right after that. And I came up with a word called snapacity, which is the ability to deliver a blow over and over. And really it's because uh, of these observations. If, if I can build work capacity by doing crawling, dragging chains, uh, you know, backwards walking up hills, that's so much better than just you know being on that court field uh pitch oh hours and hours and hours uh you know beating up the athletes we can do things a little bit easier faster <laughs> easier uh, a little bit more efficiently here build the engine here smash that together and not only do we save time and energy i think you come out with a better product so that's but that, that's that also means when it comes to like game day or like it comes to the season and all that sort of stuff, it's, it, it, you're not injured as much. I would, yeah. I would say as well. Yeah. Cause like you say, you're not beating the athletes up during training and then saying, right, it's time to go play. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's building their, well, building their engine, like you say, during, tr during training. And then it's like, when it comes to time to play, they're ready to go. There's a famous story about America's best high school football team. And one of the assistant coaches walked up to the head coach and he said, are we still playing a game on Friday? And the head coach goes, yeah. He goes, well, we just ran 85 full contact plays. In a normal game, we run 65. How are we supposed to recover from our training sessions? How, how, how? Now, do you expect us to come back in and do it again on Friday night? I mean, uh, a lot of us are starting to pick that up. Uh, I used to work for, a, it's a basketball team here called the Utah Jazz. Uh, I'll hold out all the jokes and we'll just move on from there. But one time, uh, Coach Sloan just said, you know, this really simple thing. He said, uh, you know, the, these are grown men. They don't need, we don't need to wake them up in the morning and have them do a shoot around. These are professional athletes. Let them sleep in on these road trips. And then, you know, we'll, they know what to do. And that's when I started to realize that, 
in all these different areas of sports, there were coaches beginning to emerge from the Stone Age and, uh, you know, look at things a little bit different. Yeah. So I suppose really just just being specific, I know we have a lot of people who listen who, you know, uh, RKC certified, Strong First certified, that kind of thing. So with the RKC, the main thing that's going to require the, the and obviously the whole three days requires work capacity to be able to go through and, and do work capacity, it. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of the actual the the, the kind of the the uh, tested elements, I suppose is the, is the the kind of the famous snatch test. You know, the one hundred snatches in in five minutes with a with a twenty four kilo. Um, but I suppose if you're like you say, if you're trying to build work capacity by practicing the snatch test, then you're gonna it, you, you're potentially going to be training a lot of bad reps when you get to the kind of tired end. Whereas if someone like Tim, I mean, the thing I've been saying to people who are coming um, to see us in April um, is that, and and I don't know, I, I say to people, uh, how tall are you, Tim? Just out of interest. 5'10", uh, 5'10", five, ten. Five, five, ten. inches. Five, ten. Yeah, because I, I say to you, I thought you were taller than me. No. <laughs> no. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, but oh. I say, the word I've used to describe Tim to neck. lots of people <laughs> is, yeah, I, I, the word I've used is, is he he moves so elegantly, you know? So the, uh, the, that 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 word of you know elegant and the move, the, almost like a you know the the the, the ballet dancer who you know the posture and the poise and the elegance. So I suppose if you're if you if your technique is really sound, which it obviously is for doing like a kettlebell snatch, um, and you've got that work capacity that you can just step up and do the one hundred snatches in in five minutes without drilling them in to death and getting tired and, and drilling sloppy reps. I mean, is that how you experienced it, Tim, when you went to do that, that five minute snatch test, having not really practiced it um, leading up to the event? I mean, you, you, you knew the technique, you were strong, you were strong enough and you had the work capacity to maintain form and maintain strength for the five minutes where most people would say would probably in the last minute, things start to fall apart a little bit. Is that a fair representation? Do you think? I mean, for me, I had done so much crawling and like my, my thing was, is I would try to do uncomfortable things while nasal breathing, but things that I mm -hmm. like doing and that I enjoy doing that made me feel good. Like, like snatching a kettlebell, a hundred reps does not make me feel good. So <laughs> it was nothing I wanted anything to do with. Right. So my regular training at home, it was just a lot of carries, a lot of crawls and crawls feel amazing, you know? Um, but I, I, I made, I, I built myself up where I could do long time trials or distances while nasal breathing so i just i just went into it figuring that 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 would be enough um <clears throat> so and when i did the snatch test like I, I actually tried to do the entire thing nasal breathing towards the end the you know the mouth would pop open but it was more to exhale air versus like i was always inhaling nasal breathing um, and Dan actually no rep me on about three reps. And I was like, I could not believe it, but that's, that's fine. Uh, so it was like 103 reps, but I guess if there are no reps, it's still just a hundred. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, but, and, and it was tiring, like, you know, cause snatching a kettlebell a hundred times, um, in less than five minutes is, I mean, that's, that's a thing, but I, my body was just ready for it. Um, the good thing about like crawling and walking and rucking and, and carrying, that that in itself, even though it can become very uncomfortable, it's it's nourishing to your body. It's a it's a reset. It doesn't tear your body down. It builds your body up. So so it's a way to train where you can train something that's very, very uncomfortable and hard, but it doesn't it just doesn't break you down. Mm. And I wonder from just uh, we, we talked, uh, who is it we had on Pete recently where we referenced um, armor building? Uh, oh, it was Sean Ken's, wasn't it? uh we had yes. yeah, yeah, yeah no for sure no we talked about we were talking about um armor building dan and 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 um because he he's south african rugby uh you know and was talking about that element of, of build it build and, and and brought your work into the conversation and um and he mentioned that the hands as something that most people uh need need you know when working with kettlebells people suffer with to begin with repetitions and stuff but Tim, I suppose if you're crawling all the time and on varied surfaces and things like that, um, do you, you, your hands are fairly robust and fairly, uh, 
used to friction, I suppose you could you could say from from crawling and things, or you didn't have problems with hands having not really done well, lots of volume. So I mean, I mean, there is some of that, but the thing, I, and I know, like Dan probably can talk more to this than I can, but you know, kettle kettlebell training is a perishable skill, right? Um, so but if you like when I first started training kettlebells, I tore my hands up. Well, that taught me a lesson, taught me how to hold a kettlebell. <laughs> I didn't forget it. Like, it's, like when you've done something so many times, like it's like, you know, you don't forget how to ride a bicycle, right? So I had done, and throughout the 10, 15 years, I had done so much kettlebell training. I knew how to hold a bell. I'm not going to tear. I will never tear my hands up again with a kettlebell ever. Mm. Um, Cause I did not enjoy it when I did. And I learned from it. So, <laughs> so I even, I, 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 I don't think that crawling like made the top of my hands resilient. Um, that was just yeah. knowing how to hold a, hold a bell. Yeah, no, that's a fantastic answer. Yeah, no, that's great. So it's not Can the, I, uh, yeah, sorry, go on, Dan. Yeah. A couple of things he said there, you know, w watching him do the snatch test without the proper preparation, but he, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, first off, you know, his nasal breathing thing reminded me of what I teach my athletes. Uh, every if you come with me up the university today, I got practice at noon. Um, one of the things I will say to the young, especially our runners, you know, stop looking like you're tired. You know, they'll they'll finish a 200 meters and and you think you think they just did the Hawaiian triathlon on the most humid day in the history of the planet. Well, it's just the 200 meters. Stay tall, walk around, breathe through your nose, act like you've been there before. And, and that was that's and that's the per phrase. The, there's two things that came out of what Tim just said. Uh, both are been theirs. One of the things, uh, you know, if I defeat you in a in a competition, which is probably likely going to happen, so just get used to it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just going to act like I've been there before. You know, I'm not going to beat on my chest and point to the crowd and machine gun you with my pinkies and all that bullshit. I've been there. The thing that Tim did really well, and, it, and it's and it's a good thing for people to think about when they're having these challenges, including a six mile walk, a, a six million you know step thing. You got to act like you've been there. You know, you can't at the end of every single time you did your walks, you know, you can't be going oh man, today I walked two miles, bro, you know, finger, you know, chest pump. No, you act like you've been there, which also brings you back to the hand thing. See, I don't believe, so when I first got involved with the RKC and kettlebells, it was a, a badge of honor to have shredded hands. And then one day I realized what kind of, until you're, so I'm shaking hands with this person I want to hire me and I'm bleeding out. My hands are bleeding. I got chalk all over them. There's nothing but, you know, war wounds here. I look like I crawled over glass to shake their hand. They're not going to get a lot of clients doing that. When you do a two or three day kettlebell cert, your hands at the end should be normal because you, you, you worked with the bell, not against the bell. Now, listen, I get, when I Olympic lift, I get the callus here from using the hook grip. And when I do a lot of kettlebells, I do get that ridge. When I throw the discus, I get the ridge right here. It's a ridge. It's not a rip. And I and I think that's kind of the answer. Been there. That might be there's a those are two words I think you really want to start to emphasize with young athletes. Uh there is a documentary on I think it's on Netflix right now, it might be on Prime, about an American running back named uh Barry Sanders, who famously always, when he scored a touchdown, handed the ball gently to the official he never celebrated anything and uh and the idea i always try to teach my athletes act like you've been there act like you've been there um, that's because all you and all you can do really in sports anyway just mm. piss off your opponent which is never a good idea <laughs> that's, that's great because because you're talking about like within sport but a lot of listeners will be you know recreational time mm -hmm. training and stuff like that and it's like I've 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 thought about this a lot. What you've just said there has made perfect sense in uh, to something I've been thinking for a while. Because like when I've been getting, I mean I've got Paul McElroy as my coach, and you know so I'm getting PRs all over the place at the minute, um, which is fantastic. But when I'm doing them, I'm not like you've just said. I'm not kind of like 
fantastic way, like smashing the walls and all that sort of stuff. It's I'll just do it, and I'm like, I, I thought that would happen because it felt like it was right, like the right sort of time. But what I have noticed, the other thing about what you were saying about people being really tired after running and, and, and what have you, and the relaxed thing, I noticed on my pull-ups, when I get tired, I start to, I start to like scrunch my face up, which then makes you do that, and then I'm trying to pull. So if I relax my face, all of a sudden everything, it, like the next pull-up feels good. And I... I used to say that to my guys all the time. And one of them specifically used to like, used to really be like, right, I'm going to do a press. And it wasn't very heavy, but he, he, he'd grit his teeth and his cheeks had come up. And then I'm like, right, okay, so you're going to get a sore neck and your shoulders are going to move in the wrong way and all that because he's putting so much effort into it. It's like, you've got to put a lot of effort in, but if you relax your face, you realise that the effort comes from somewhere else other than everything that hurts. Because how many people get sore jaw, sore jaw um, tight neck, sore shoulders that don't work very well and are crunchy and all of that sort of stuff. So just that that's just reminded me of that as well. And I noticed that, um, I noticed it in one of the videos I was sending to Paul in my pull-ups. I was like, I'm making, because I've under my beard, I've got dimples, you see. So I, I noticed my dimples and I was like, ah, right, I'm, I'm doing that wrong. No dimples. That's what you want to tell people. <laughs> and then That reminds me of Dan when he talks about you, smart smile when you throw the discus, isn't it, Dan? You're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Arousal yeah. control. But the, the thing, Tim, one of the things Tim preaches, and it's been very helpful for me, is that you keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Do and, and just and what I find about that. So for me, Tim, uh, the way my brain works, I need to do something versus not do something. So for me to if I'm holding my tongue on the roof of my mouth, I'm doing something. And that seems to make me happier. Whereas I'm sure a lot of other people might want to say, you might be able to help some people by saying, you know, don't tense up your face, you know, relax your face. I like that. I like the idea of sticking the tongue to the roof of my mouth because it's an active, it's an active thought for me. Uh, but yeah, yeah, actually you're right on there, James. Um, in fact, if you look at that video of me winning the nationals, first off, you can see me smile as I start. But also, too, after I throw, and you can hear the crowd. I mean, the crowd, you know, it's track fields of, you know, the seven people uh, at the Nationals, you know. Uh, <laughs> biggest event of the year, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I walk over, and I look down, and I realize I've won. And I just kind of, and it, you, you don't see a reaction, even though I've just won uh, with a big mark, a big throw, because I... I, I take my own advice. I look down at the mark and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about it. Uh, pardon me, I have to deal with one quick thing. Okay, I'm still here. You want to do a dance or something, James? Or... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I keep, uh, sorry, I keep a CO2 monitor in my office uh, and uh, it that little bing, bing, bing you just heard was... <laughs> my CO2 number went. So there is a large mammal inside my well-insulated office eating up all the oxygen in here. <laughs> so I just had to oh, I crack open the window. <laughs> and do you think, I know that this is a, a thing, Tim, maybe you could talk about this, Tim, but the, um, you know, the kind of, what is the, I, I don't know the best phrase, but kind of physiologically that the position you put yourself in and the way that you move your body affects the way that you that you feel and obviously the way yes, it does affect, can affect the movement yes yeah, so he dancing <laughs> and we got the superman yeah um because i know when I, I used to run a few marathons and things and and it was it was funny running the london marathon a number of times there's parts in the london marathon where and you know london pretty well dan obviously um there's parts of the marathon route where you're running and you, there's no one there because you're running through like a little housing estate or something and there's there's no one there and then there's parts of the marathon where you run and there's six people deep when you're running along the embankment or you're coming around to you know and it's so funny you run you run when there's no one there and you can get really sluggish and you feel tired and you show that you're tired and and it's not very pleasant but as soon as you 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 come somewhere where there's like loads of people cheering and there's people waving flags and there's cameras you suddenly kind of you think oh, 
run like it, make it look easy, you know, make it look easy, look confident, glide along and every and waving at the crowd and you feel you feel great. And I just wondered in terms of the how how you I suppose well both of you really, but maybe Tim first of all, that the way you hold yourself really does change the way you your your physiology affects your psychology, doesn't it? To yes. to, to a huge to a huge <laughs> extent. Maybe we can we can touch on that. And well and everything everything about about a person is a two-way street. So psychology can affect your structure and your physiology and your structure and physiology can affect how, how you think. Right. So, so it all, it, but it all matters. Right. So, um, and you know, this, like if somebody's sad, how do they hold themselves? Hmm. Well, and if they hold themselves like that, how do they start thinking or how are their thoughts? But if somebody is, you know, standing very confidently, how, what is what are their thought processes like where's their nervous system because your posture is also information and 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 how you move is attached to how you feel but but and how you hold yourself is really how you move though so so how you hold yourself is attached to how you feel so if you stand confidently you feel more confidently um and like like dan said stop looking like you're tired when you do that, you're reinforcing to your body, you're telling your body to be tired. You're telling it to, and you're telling it, you're teaching it how to be tired also, which is a whole other thing. But if you, if you stay upright and you, and you, you breathe through your nose, you keep your tongue under your mouth and you, and it, it will, you're teaching your body something else. You're teaching your body. I'm not tired. I can keep going. And your mind knows that too, because it's all information. So it's a way to, to build up the body and the mind through simple things like positioning um tongue position i mean it, it all matters um and one thing dan said about smiling before before he would throw so smiling is information it means everything's okay everything's safe i feel good when typically people when they smile they feel good um and i was when i was at his place doing the rkc when he was we were having to do one of his little workouts where it was double squats do double squats move down the line pick up heavier bells do double squats move down the line pick up heavier bells move down the line I would get up to the bells and I would, I would smile before I'd pick them up. And then before I would squat, I would hold a smile on my face. And every time, no matter how heavy they were, it was easier each time. Um, just simply, and the only thing that made a difference was me smiling versus me not smiling. Mm. Um, so it was just, it's a neat thing to like, to be able to experiment with stuff like that and let your body teach you, but definitely your positioning and how you hold yourself definitely affects how you think and feel and move. Mm. No, that's great, and and obviously, Dan, you 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 concur with that from your experience and from everything that you do. And then, then the job of the coach, the trainer, the the parent is to reinforce that. So, uh, and it's interesting because it it there is there is a learning curve. Wouldn't you agree on that, Tim? Is that you have to you have to come back to it. You have to come back to it. You have to come back to it. Um, you know, if you come to one of my practices you'll see that I joke a lot with my athletes. Uh, we'll just do weird things. I'll invent, you know, you're now the world champion in the, you know, stick throw or something. It, because what I'm trying to do is reinforce that when you throw the discus shot, javelin ham or whatever, when you play American football, it's, it's an opportunity. It should be fun. It should be joyful. And you can't, you can't go boom, 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 boom. And then tell the athlete at the end, now we're going to celebrate our season. You know, you should really be celebrating the season while you're in the middle of it too. And that was, that's what I liked about your marathon example. You know, you probably, how many hours did it take you? Four or five? Uh, I've done it in 340 before. Oh, 340. Yeah, okay. that, that's the fastest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 340, I mean, that solid time. Yeah. You know, for a, yeah. So and when you ran that 340, I would, I would venture that in some ways it was easier than when you'd run a five hour marathon. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So sometimes elite performance, I elite performance is one of the easiest things you can do. It, and that's the issue we have. And, and this ties in discus throwers. When you don't feel anything, that's when you break the records. Mm. You want to feel something. So on the next throw, you'll feel it. And it'll go, you know, 20, 20 meters less, but it felt like you really hit it. Well, yeah, you did, and it didn't go very far at all. Uh, in the same way in the snatch test, you know, you know, if I if we do the Secret Service snatch test, which is the ten minute one, 
and you, you know you're freaking out at 100 reps when you get to 100 on the 10 minute one and you're only halfway there let's see you you let's see what's going on with your body your brain you know your smile your breathing you'll probably sound like there's a great white shark uh real close to you in the in the middle of the ocean hmm. Hmm. well no, no no they're not so bad <laughs> tiger sharks they're assholes okay. yeah. just as an interesting point i'll say that the fastest marathon i did which was that which was that one was actually in paris and uh and in paris when you do the marathon there was stations there where you'd be running and and usually obviously in london they, they you know they give out like bananas and lucas aid and and jelly babies and things like that and running in paris there was uh there were stations where they had sausages and uh and red wine at one point. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be running them out and they had cheese and sausages and red wine and people would stop and be drinking like a glass of you know a glass of red wine and then carry on so it was uh I'm sure I'm not making up. I'm sure it actually happened. I may have been hallucinating at the time, but no, I'm pretty sure it did happen. <laughs> I, yeah, you were, that, that's hilarious. You were running along like, oh, I could really do with a sausage and some red wine. Ooh, that to be a stand <laughs> Just the one. No one else yeah. remembers that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here in Utah, they give you hot chocolate and then uh, jello with uh, carrot strings in it. Yeah, that would be, sorry. <laughs> You'd have to know Utah to get that joke. Okay, oh, <laughs> Everything's got jello in it here. Yes. Oh dear, David. So when when you guys uh, obviously you're over in uh, in England on the 13th and the 14th of uh, of April next year, um, what what can people expect from from what we're going to kind of do and what we're going to cover? I know it's kind of going to be fairly malleable depending upon you know the group as well and 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 what we can do and the weather and we, I, one thing i will say dan there's still people talk to me now i can't remember what year it was but one year you came over and we all did um loaded carries with you out in the car park and yeah. i think you got people doing offset loaded carries with the equivalent of body weight spread over two hands and still people talk to me about that today because they've done loaded carries in the car park with Dan. So if the weather's good, it would be amazing if we could maybe uh, you oh, know, I, work out outside and do some some stuff like that would be great. But yeah, what, what, yeah. Carry, uh, Tim, that's one, of your, that's one of your standards, right? The carry world, right? Yeah, I love it. That's yeah, I mean, my bread and butter. Yeah, I, <laughs> it, it's strange, you know. I spend all this time and energy writing all this stuff. And it's honestly the, the best thing I do is the easy is the easiest thing, you know, mm -hmm. just pick stuff up and walk with it. And honestly, that's about as far as you need to go on the loaded carry training mm -hmm. because Tim, right. The body's going to make you find the position. You know, if you're going to carry sacks of flour up a mountain, you know, eight hours a day, you'll figure out a good position or you'll break, you know, yeah and it's all it's all reflexive there's no no real coaching needed no cueing it's the same thing as pushing a car if you're going to push a car your body knows how to stack up so that all the joint angles are in the right spot so you can have the maximum leverage to push the car nobody has to tell you how to do it yeah you know there's no pushing the car cert yet i've got, I've got one everybody it's june here in salt lake City. there's well, got to be some money in that like you were saying about tearing your hands with a kettlebell and the amount of, like, you know, it's like, right, people are getting bruises on the forearm. We can make some money out of that. Let's sell forearm guards. Oh, people are tearing <laughs> yeah. their hands. Let's sell loads of k -tape. Let's sell this. Let's sell that. It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the hardest part about my uh, pushing car cert is, you know, uh, you have to know every varietal of car and where to appropriately put your hands uh, to push. Uh, the Mazda 3 and the Mazda 6, we're still arguing about what the mo more appropriate hand positions are. I don't want to get started. I don't want to go down that road. It's got ugly. Friendships were lost, my friend. Friendships were lost. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about is a bunch of nonsense that everyone just kind of lets grandpa speak. And then Tim shows up and he steals the day. Tim, tell us about what you're going to go through. So really what he's going to tell you is he talks really, really fast. And then I talk really, really slow. And so they're together, we'll balance it out. Um, but what I, for, for, for me, I'll, I'll, I'll take people through how to, how to press reset. Um, but so they can experience it, not just like listen about it and to know it, but like to experience it so that they own it. Um, but a lot of times what I like to do is whatever Dan's talking about, 
see if I can fit it in so that it, it comes more alive to them. You know, this is how pressing reset works. And this is why you want to do it because this is just, here's what Dan was just doing or talking about. And now we can, can see it, like apply it to this mm. as well. I think hey, it's going to be, yeah, sorry, Dan, go on. Uh, Tim, do you want me to start with that first part with the values and all that stuff? Do you want me to start? I love with that? that. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so what I'll do, uh, I'll James, I'll send you some uh, PDFs to and send those, email those PDFs, and then maybe we can have some extra copies. But uh, mm. one of the issues I'm starting to really get better at, um, see, for me, it, I mean, I don't, as soon as we hang up here, uh, I'm going to have people coming over and we're, it's Thursday's tonic day. So, I mean, I train every day. I, I can't imagine a day without exercise. Uh, I've been drinking protein shakes the whole time where I'm on this call. This is, you know, I'm, I'm at 60 grams. This is just, this is just the way I do things. So one of the things I'm trying to do is help people get themselves in, into this, this mindset that, that your exercise, your nutrition, your recovery are just part of who you are. It's part of your, like, I mean, you could go through a whole day without urinating. I, oh, when I got sick in the Middle East, I was so ill. There was a three-day period. Where, but I I don't think most of our listeners could go a couple of days without urinating because there is a, a need for it. And you kind of pick up on it after a while. Um I want you to get in the same kind of mental state with that, with your, your, your care of your body. And uh, one of the first things you got to do is you got to kind of find, you got to link onto some things that are core to your own belief system. And please, whenever I say, and uh, I, I talked to Tim about this, when I say, what do you value most? People always throw out the softball. Well, it's my faith in my family. Okay, good. All right. But, but really what, you know, what are your, what are your, values and then what we do is we launch you into that five two thing you still want me to do that five two thing again uh tim i thought all of that was extremely valuable and the, the <laughs> biggest the first question is two decades from now what are you going to be doing so i'm 66 on my way to 67 so that's 86 and 87 years of age you know and i have grandchildren i, I want to be around for uh with the uh the anniversary of tiff's death is monday and, uh, you know, my mom died, uh, when she was in her fifties. And, uh, when, when I look at my, so my daughters, Kelly and Lindsay, their grandma died in their fifties, their mom died in their fifties. You know, how am I going to break that pattern with them? I don't want my daughters dying in their fifties. And by the way, if I'm around 20 years from now, my daughters will be in their fifties. So. Well, okay, the reason I threw out all that heavy stuff right there is that caused an emotional response in me. It really did. I'm I'm right close to crying right now. Um, my heart is truly heavy right now. So what does that tell me to do? It tells me to make sure I get my protein in. I'm going to go into the gym and train in a few minutes, and I'm going to make sure I call up both daughters today and tell them I love them. The two-decade thing, thinking 20 years down the line, ideally will rip open your emotions a little bit and say, the reason I want, the reason, I, and someone says, why do you work out every day? And you'll just turn to him and say, listen, man, you know, and, and you'll be, you'll have a response that actually will bring an emotional response. Like, like right there, if you ask me why I work out every day, the response I just had was almost like a fight. I work out because I care so much for my kids. I want to be a role model, you know, boom, boom, boom. So that's some of the stuff we got to do. So why do I tell you that? I'm going to work out every day this week because there's this 20, this Dan John 20 years from now, who's going to be really happy. I did. Mm. So those are some of the things we'll also, and my side, we'll also go through movement, some of the movement matrix and all that stuff, you know, mm. uh, I want to talk about the push, pull, hinge, squat, uh, quadrant, and even, you know, all the, I, my brain works in quadrants. So, you know, we'll, mm. so that's, that's amazing. Cause I did a video yesterday. I put a post up. I uh, my, my girlfriend found some um, pictures on a phone that would, would obviously take an out of a photo album or take an other photo album at my mom's house. And one of the pictures was me at 12 years old. And I was doing some juggling because I used to juggle. Uh, so I posted it up and I've got long hair and an Aerosmith T-shirt on. And I think it was like 1988 or something like that. But it sparked a memory 
because at the time my dad would have been 50 and I remember him not feeling very well. And he died in 2004. So he died when he, he died 15 years later. But I remember at the time him not him complaining that he wasn't feeling very well. So he was basically already, you know, it, 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 he, he smokes a lot and he died of lung cancer. So it was like, again, like that, that I, I did a video on it yesterday, um, a live video on Facebook, because I was just like, this is a great message. It's like, what happens? Like, you've got to start now because you've got, this is your 15 year warning. Cause I'll be 50 in three years, which is the, how old he was at that time when he was ready. You know, he was, he was already on the decline. Um, and it, it like what you, everything you've just said there, it, it got the, like, got the same kind of response from me as well. So it's huge. And that's the whole thing when people say like, you know, why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want this? Why do you want that? And the, you keep asking why it's like, if you think of, if you get into something like that, you don't need it. It's that, that's the why it's just, it's part of you. Like you say, it becomes part of your character, doesn't it? Mm. So that's um, yeah. Thanks for that. That, <laughs> that was worth the price of admission right there. Yeah. That was awesome. Mm. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine uh, sent me a, a message this morning. He's going through the same dark night of the soul I went through uh, for a couple of years. And it's interesting because you, you know, and that's why I think that's why I like to talk about this kind of stuff so much. Everybody likes, okay, hi, I'm Dan. I invented the goblet squat, the suitcase carry, and a bunch of other crap you do in the gym. I think I clean things up, right? I, I, I mean, I, I, I know I'm full of myself, but I think I've done a nice job in the strength and conditioning community of organizing some thought concepts, right? I, I do. That's great. But what I'm starting to really realize is the most important thing I can do is role model life, overcoming some of life's issues, over uh, being brave, uh, you know, fighting through these things. And I, and I really think, you know, I'm I'm 66. And I'm on my way to 67. I've been I've been uh, lifting a long time, and and I think now I have a a big enough public presence to talk about the addictions, the pain, uh, overcoming this kind of thing, moving forward, still looking ahead. You know, it's not, it's, it's so much more. The phrase make a difference is so much bigger to me now uh, than it was when we st first started saying around this house 20 years ago. Yeah. Mm. I've got I've got another thing as well because I put, I put something else up um, about self help books and before because I've got Christmas coming up and everything I'm going to lighten the mood now we've got Christmas coming up and um, you know people might want to get self help books for Christmas or something like that and I put up a thing saying um, before you get your next self help book I'll summarize it for you now whichever one it is because it doesn't matter <laughs> I'll summarize it for you now and it was like basically decide who you want to be in the future, get clear on it, and then do the things that person would do every day and do it for a very long time. Now, if only there was one way you could put that into a sentence, there's a guy who we've had on the podcast before who, uh, I can't remember his name, but it was something like Little and Often Over the Long Haul, something like that. Well, that sounds it? really good. <laughs> I can't remember his name, though. <laughs> I think that's well, no, the thing. That's the conversation we've just kind of had, and, and certainly in the last kind of 10, 15 minutes, is... is is why I'm so looking forward to, to seeing both of you because so much in the fitness industry and, and, you know, you can sit and listen to people talking about joint angles and, you know, variations of load and technique. And, 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 but I think the thing that both you, Dan and Tim, it, it's fitness, health, training, life, is so much bigger and is so much more important than the than the petty kind of niggles and 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 things that people argue about online and the you know my way is better than your way and this is the right tech. I mean, just just getting to spend time with people like yourselves and one of the I went away last weekend and just had a weekend on my own reading some books and making some notes and things and and writing goals and and, and thinking about life and everything and. Um, you know, doing this podcast every week and getting to spend time with people like yourselves, 
it just puts things in it, it re, every Thursday we do this don't we Pete we have done for is it three years now pretty uh yeah over three years isn't it over, just over, over yeah yeah just yeah. over three years and I sit here on a Thursday for an hour and I come away from it and I always feel like I've got something you know or I've, I've I've changed the way I think about something or something's reminded me of something or something's helped me look at something slightly differently or something's made me grateful for something you know so um and I just yeah I just yeah can't wait to spend time with you both in in person next year and I just want to thank you so Dan you know just what you've just been talking about there and 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 Tim as well you know thank you both for for being so open for being so honest for being so uh just being yourselves you know and being so real I suppose is uh in a world of you know Instagram and all the rest of it which we spoke about before just being real and being human is so much more important than uh you know being flashy or being uh cool you know so not that you're not cool Dan <laughs> okay uh I think that's a good place to start to wrap up actually uh Pete have you got anything you'd like to say well as we kind of as we close um not really oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well no because we've we've spoke about I'm I'm going through that thing now of, of like what you just said the reaction to doing something like this so I'm kind of like mm. I'm starting. Yeah. To, I'm start. I usually will finish the episode, and then I'll then I'll start to think back mm. on what we're talking mm. about and stuff like that. Mm. But I'm doing that already now because this has made me yeah. do that. So I've, no, I can't it's funny. I've, anything at the moment. <laughs> that's funny. I'm sitting here, and there's a picture of my dad there. Yeah. He died at 71. You know, sailing. You know, and he just, I just, you just look across, and you just think of, yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, so Tim and Dan, you're going to be with us April the 13th and 14th at Unique Results in Chelmsford. This, there may still be a few tickets available when this podcast go live. Um, we'll put a link with it, uh, with things. And yeah, I would, if you are in England, if you are, well, we've got people already booked in. They're coming over from Norway. They're coming over from Ireland. They're coming over from all over. But if you want to come and spend a really fantastic weekend um, with, uh, with Dan and Tim and, you know, have some great well, conversations, not just training. You know, it's going to yeah, be and the thing, life. Uh, and this is, and I, I know it might drive some of the rest of you crazy, but that's one of the reasons I always think we go out as a group. We mm. always go out as a group after we have some drinks together. Sometimes we have way too many uh, and play sploosh or whatever that game was called. Yeah. And but sometimes it's just, but and you know, sometimes at about seven thirty at night, something comes up and it's it changes careers changes mm. lives yeah mm. yeah yeah and no we've got yeah we've got yeah nice meal out on the saturday night drinks on the friday night you know it's just going to be a lovely weekend so yeah <clears> if there <throat> are tickets available when this goes out and you and you want to jump on please do uh and it'll be great to see you uh tim thank you so much again for joining us and thank you for for making this work and it's all all coming together i can't wait to see you uh in april and i hope you have a lovely uh christmas and a lovely uh, holiday season and everything else oh man thank you for having me i'm um, super excited to, to get to come over there and um i don't know if this will translate or work but <laughs> i don't know <laughs> and, and dan yeah thank you as always dan for your for your ninth visit we will get you back on for your 10th and uh and and yeah thank you and i hope you have a lovely lovely christmas and 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 a new year and holiday season and everything. Uh, and oh, I'll obviously be in touch. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. And to all of our listeners, uh, next week, uh, the 22nd of December, we will be here just with our Christmas special. I think it's just going to be uh, Pete and myself recording the Christmas special together. Uh, is, I've, yeah, told... I've got a very, very, very special Christmas jumper for it as well. I've been told Pete's got a very <laughs> special Christmas jumper for the, uh, for the Christmas special. So we will see you next week for that. And then we've got loads of guests lined up for the coming months and things. And like I say, please do, you know, if you're at all, if you're, if you're local and you want to come along April the 13th and 14th, you need results. If there's still tickets available, there may be a couple left jump on and do that and we'll see you thank you for listening please do like share subscribe leave a review if you're watching or listening on a platform that allows you to do so um, if you'd like to join the facebook group go on facebook and search groups for health oddity and we'll let you in and we are currently trying to increase our subscribers on youtube so if you're on youtube a lot give us a subscribe on there and we will see you next week for the christmas special uh thank you tim thank you Thank you, Dan. 
Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Good seeing you, Tim. And thank you, Peter Lent. I will see you uh, all next week. Bye-bye.